thank you for showing up. It's so early. I was like, is anyone going to be here? But yay, thank you so much. We were just talking about John Wick, yeah. and I didn't even realize that people had come in. If you've been to any of my panels before, you know I talk about John Wick all the time. <laughs> so, well, welcome to thank Baltimore. You. Thank you. Thank so you, everyone, much. for coming. Let's give a great big applause. Thank you. Is this your first time in Baltimore? I was in Baltimore like 20 years ago because my husband was doing Runaway Bride, okay. which filmed in Ocean City. And I think we came to Baltimore and then we're in Ocean City and I haven't been back since. So it's really nice to be here. This is a great way to come back because Baltimore mm -hmm. is the best convention out there. It's so great. It's been a really fun weekend. You all have made it really wonderful. So thank you all for coming. We are going to do questions here in a little bit. So think of some really awesome questions or think of bad questions and we can answer those too. Um, so let's talk a little bit about you first. Okay. And um, so how, how did you get, I mean, when did you like know you wanted to, this is what you wanted to do. You wanted to be an actor, you wanted to be an, a voice actor, you wanted to do all this. Okay, that's a great question because I didn't know. I started out as a dancer and, and that I knew I wanted to do from the age of 10, I would say. And I, I worked as a dancer in my early teen years and um, moved to New York. And I met, through a dance teacher, I met a manager who started sending me out on auditions that were not dance. It would be like a dancer in an after school special, but I didn't have to dance. And I was like, okay, wait, what is this acting thing? And I just started exploring it, becoming really interested in it. I met a lot of other young people my age who had gone to acting school, like high school of performing arts. And I started taking class and working on this new craft. And I would say the first time I was in a recording studio, I knew that I loved that more than anything. Being in the recording studio with the microphone, disappearing into my imagination was just something I knew I wanted to do from day one. Oh. Mm -hmm. So I read that you didn't even, like you weren't going to try out for the voice of Jasmine. Well, I, I had the audition. It, was, it wouldn't have been something I thought I would be up for because most princesses had to sing. So it wouldn't be something that I would have been auditioning for because I wasn't in musical theater. I was not a singer. I never in a million years thought that I would have an opportunity to voice a Disney princess because they all sang. But this particular princess did not have a song because she was not the title character. It was sort of a sidekick character or, you know, a secondary yeah. character. Obviously, as I went along recording, the part grew and they added a song halfway through the recording. And I was like, well, I guess this is as far as I go. And they were like, no, 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 we're, we're going to try something new. We're going to have someone sing for you. And I was like, that's not going to work. There's no way. They're going to figure out she can talk. Like, they're, they're going to end up having the singer go back and do all of the dialogue. And true to their word, they found an incredible singer who matched my speaking voice. And I felt when I saw it that it was seamless, I thought, "There's you can't tell that it changes to another person when she goes into song. So it was just really incredible. And shout out to the brilliant Leia Salonga, who just elevated that song. I mean, right? She's just so incredible. And I feel so lucky to have shared this part with her. Doesn't she just sound like a princess? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> just like the sweetest, sweetest voice. So when you went about finding the voice for Jasmine. I mean, how, how was that process? Did you try several different ones? Did you have to, because she's 14, right, at the beginning? Well, or 15? it was written in the script that she was 15, yeah. but then they kind of made it ambiguous because there was a line 
you must be married to a prince by your 16th birthday. And then they were like, mm, maybe that's a little cringe. <laughs> like, let's, let's make it by your next birthday. Yeah. So, so that's what we ended up doing. So she's somewhere in those years developmentally. You know, she's kind of like finding herself and, and sort of breaking out on her own for the first time. Mm -hmm. So somewhere in her late teens, I would say. Um, what was the question? Though? Finding the voice. Finding the voice, right. So this was one thing I only ever could do me. I, I really wasn't someone who did voices, who did multiple characters. It, I just went in and, and acted. It, it was just whatever voice came out. It was me, mm -hmm. but with these lines. And it was different than their concept of the character which they said it was a young Lauren Bacall that they were looking for. That's not my voice. <laughs> I'm not that low, you know, it's just not my voice. So I, I was like, I'll do what I can do, and we'll see if it works. And if it doesn't, that's okay. We'll all go our own ways. And it worked for them. But they did have this concept of having a little deeper voice than I naturally have. So they worked with me to lower the pitch of my voice slightly so that it was a little bit sultrier. It was a little less high, which is where I would naturally speak. And I think that's been kind of nice because as the years have gone by, I don't have to try to hit pitch that I used to speak at. It's just very natural where my voice is yeah. today. Oh, that's great. So. so how do you think, I mean, this is, one role has just impacted your life yes. in a, just in ways that you couldn't imagine. Yes. When you were recording it, when you were doing this, did you have any idea that years and years later you were still going to be you know, voicing the character in, in video games and TV specials and Wreck-It Ralph and um, yeah. or Ralph Breaks the Internet, excuse me. And um, I mean, how do you think that is like, took you from like, just changed your life? I had no idea. For sure, I thought it was one job, one movie. I had no idea there would be a sequel, a TV series, toys, games, park attractions, it just didn't occur to me that this was going to be something that would be part of my life forever. And I think it's better that I didn't know that because the pressure I would have put on myself would have probably been too great. So taking it one project at a time, I think, calmed me down for sure. Oh, that's yeah, and it's... It's really, been, there have been so many surprises. Like Ralph Breaks the Internet, there was no way I would have ever guessed that I would be in another feature film for Disney playing Princess Jasmine in 2015, or what year was it? Maybe 2017, yeah. around then. I just could not have imagined that. And it was such an incredible scene that they wrote that, like, we all got to come together, all the princesses, and be together in one movie. It was just, I think, incredible for all of us. That's great. So how different is it recording for the film or TV and then recording for like a video game? So it, they are all slightly different. I'll give you a minute to get settled. <laughs> <laughs> Also, big shout out to our yes, interpreters. Yes, thank you, thank so, you so much. much. Thank you. Um, how, oh, how is it different? Film, television, video games, they are all different. The film recording process was completely different from the television series. In the television series, we were all in a room together. There were, I don't know, maybe 10, 12 chairs set up with music stands, and we would go from page one to page 30, chronologically through the script, and when it wasn't your turn to talk, or if you weren't in the scene, you stayed very quiet while the other actors were working. And the film, I always recorded my scenes, sometimes out of order, very often alone, and then 
also on another day I would record all the same scenes with the actor I was in the scene with. And then I don't know really from which day they took the final take. That was something that I couldn't tell you. If it was from my, the only thing I could tell you for sure is everything with Robin Williams was from the day I worked with Robin Williams <laughs> <laughs> because he improvised and it was, there were, there were no other takes to use except the ones that we did with him. So let's talk about that for a minute. It had to be just amazing to work with him on this. He's, this is like, he's, he was so talented. And um, so what, what was that like to just be in the room with his, the energy and the just like everything? Like you said, he was impromptu and ad lib things. It was being in the room with a supernova. <laughs> there was just no one like him. And a person like that comes around, you know, once in a lifetime, not even once in a generation, like once in a lifetime. And we all knew he was a genius and brilliant. What I didn't know was how kind he was. And that was something as a young actor and Scott Wenger also, we were both really young and very intimidated to be working with someone who was a hero to us. And, you know, they say never meet your heroes. I would say this was an exception. He was someone that I just thought even more of him when I met him in person. He was kinder than I could have ever imagined someone of that caliber and status to take the time to be. Is there any like one scene or one experience that stands out with him? Well, yes. Um, we were in a booth together, Scott and I and Robin, and we had to not ruin the takes. So we would have to be quiet when he was saying the funniest things. Like we were doubled over laughing, but not making a sound. Like we couldn't hit the music stand or utter anything vocally, but we were just both laughing so hard without vocalizing. So yeah, he made it hard. Oh, yeah. I imagine. <laughs> So when when you record, do you like use your hand motions? I mean, I imagine with him, he was like all over the place. He right? was, and so am I. <laughs> I do. I it's, I have to like hold on to my arm, or I'm just like gesturing all the time. And there would be times where I would lift my arm up, and like my shoulder would pop, <laughs> and I'd be like, "Sorry, we have to do that one again." So yeah, I try to stay still, but I'm. <clears throat> A dancer, and my body's very connected to my whole being. Yeah. So it is hard for me to stay still and talk. So of, of everything that you've done, is there any role that you've done that has affected you personally? A role that I've done that's affected me personally? Oh, wow. Well, I, I have had some wonderful experiences outside of animation, in theater, in film. I would say the things that I've enjoyed doing the most have been comedic roles in theater, and I've done some really great plays. I got to do Noises Off, which I don't know if anybody here knows that play. It is just an incredible play, super fun for the audience, not as fun for the actors because it's you know a door farce, so if you don't duck an ax swings and you could get hit. Like, it's, it's a really, really difficult play to do. But it was challenging in a way that was very satisfying for me. I did it with a great company at the Alley Theater in Houston. And it was, it was one of those times where I thought, there's more here than I knew I had. So it was exciting to challenge myself in that way and to get to do something that really made people laugh. So and I I did another play called I Hate Hamlet, which <laughs> very it was a it's a great play. I, I don't know if it's been done in a while, but it was on Broadway. I did a regional theater production of it, and it was just so fun. So when I get an opportunity to do comedy, I am in my element. That's that's awesome. I can tell because you like your whole face lights up when you talk about doing doing theater, and that's so that's great. 
Do we have questions? I don't want to monopolize here. Yes, in the back. Oh my what goodness. is I Hate Hamlet about? Oh, okay. It's about um, an actor who, he's a TV actor who wants to be taken seriously, so he comes to New York to do Shakespeare in the Park and to do Hamlet. And do it, he, he's terrible in the role in the beginning, and, and doing the play, he... He really like learns about himself and the ghost of John Barrymore, who is one of the greatest Hamlets of all time, comes down, interacts with him, teaches him to be a better actor and a better human. But there's a lot of silliness that goes along with it. And the character that I play is his girlfriend, who's a serious theater actress, who takes it very seriously. And it's, it's all very silly and fun. That's great. I haven't talked about that in so long. I was like, do I remember what it's about? <laughs> I think it's Hamlet. Um, <laughs> I saw another hand over here. Right yeah. Back there. So it's how do you handle nerves? I'm going to repeat the questions for the video. It's how do you handle nerves before you go in for an audition? Do you um, just like have, I'm sorry? Yeah, do you give yourself a little pep talk, you know? Yes, okay, so that's a real thing. Nerves can really get you, you know? It's, it's just something that I do have a lot of anxiety when I'm under pressure, but I do have strategies to deal with it. One thing I do is really try to breathe, and that's something I notice when I'm feeling anxious, I'm holding my breath. And if I breathe, it really calms me down puts me in the present moment. I also try to remember and remind myself that the job that's right for me is going to come to me. And if it's not right for me, there's nothing I can do to make it happen. And I, I really trust that there's a bigger plan. And I come forward prepared, do my best, and then I leave it up to the universe. That's great. I saw it right over here. Yes. Okay. I, I know. So, I know the question that you're asking. I I really don't comment on that because I really feel that that is. I'm a contributor to this character. I feel like that's a conversation that is valid. It's something that I'm glad people are talking about. I contribute what I do well to this character and everyone contributes something to her and she's something other than any individual who's involved in creating her. So and I'm, I'm very grateful to be part of the creation, but she's different than me. Yeah. Thank you for your question. Yes. Right there. Do you have yes, a favorite Disney Jafar, villain? Jafar, <laughs> of course. My favorite villain. You know, we have the love-hate relationship. So in real life, I love him. He's a great guy. Um, you know, Jasmine and Jafar, not so much. But Linda and Jonathan, we're very close. Um, I just saw yesterday someone brought a sketch that was Jasmine dressed as Jafar for Halloween. <laughs> It's amazing. Someone has it here. Oh, that's it's, great. it's actually all the princesses dressed as their villains. It's oh, really great. That's great. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Leah and I were honored with the Disney Legends Award together with Paige O'Hara and Jody Benson and um, Annie Canoni Rose, and that was in 2011. Um, Leah does theater and is in New York often, so we see each other when we're promoting Aladdin events, or if she happens to be doing a play, I go see it. Um, we, we do stay in contact, and I think she's just wonderful. 
Mm -hmm. I wanted real quick, and then I'll get to you. So when you got the call about a Disney being a Disney legend, mm -hmm. which is just had to be incredible, yeah. what what was that feeling? It was a really surreal feeling. First of all, I didn't know much about the Disney Legends program at that time. I just, I think maybe I had heard about it, but I, I didn't really know that much about it. And that year, my husband was doing a play on Broadway, and he got a Tony nomination, and it was so exciting. And then out of the blue, like weeks after he got his Tony nomination, they called me and said, you got a Disney Legends Award. And I was like, hey, sweetie, guess what? <laughs> I got an award, too. And it, it was just really, really cool. That's great. That was a, that was a big celebration that year. Yeah. OK. Yes, sir. Is there any other role that I... Is there any I, role that you would want to play with, like, make your mark on that role? Of existing characters or something in the future? Something, something tried I've tried for. for in the past. Okay. Well, I have a good story, actually. <laughs> Not a lot of people know this, but someone... This came up with Matt yesterday. Um, I auditioned before Jasmine, so it was a couple years before I had my audition for this. I told you all I was a dancer to begin with, and I had an audition for a movie called Dirty Dancing. <laughs> and I was not really acting so much yet. I was really mostly dancing still. I went in, the first audition was no dancing. They said, you know, just read the sides. I was like, okay, I don't really know what I'm doing, but okay. And it went pretty well. And they said they wanted me to come back and dance. I came back and danced for them. And that went really well. And they had me come back again and read and then again and read. And I came very close to getting that part. My last audition was me and the girl who got it. <laughs> and she went in before me and came out, and then I went in and came out, and it, it was not meant for me. But it was something that I think about sometimes, and I'm like, wow, that would have been a really different career path for me had I done that film. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that I would have had the opportunity to do Princess Jasmine if I had done Dirty Dancing. I may have been on a completely different track. So I really do believe that everything that is meant for you comes to you. That's, that's a great story. <laughs> <laughs> did you do any like, I mean, did you work with like any other people in the movie like for the scenes? Um, no, all, like all my auditions were with the director and choreographer okay. and casting director. Okay. So, and Sometimes maybe producers. Like an actor to, like, they didn't something. mix and match us, so I didn't get to meet Patrick Swayze. That would have been a dream come true. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's kind of what I was going for. <laughs> yes, I didn't. I would have loved that. No, they had us dance solo. Okay. So we actually had to choreograph our own number to, like, I think it was 60s music or 50s music or 60s music. I, I forget what it was, but it was actually a challenging audition process. And in the end, I honestly don't think I was ready for it. I think I would have been more nervous had they told me I got the job. I was almost relieved when they told me I didn't. I was like, good, I don't think that was for me. It was just, I wasn't really, I was really young and I really wasn't there yet. Well, you can just tell people, see, I was too good of a dancer for the part. <laughs> She's learning it, so I was just too good. You know, that's, that's really interesting. Good. That would have been a challenge, mm -hmm. because when you do know something well, to act as if you don't know it, mm -hmm. it's, that is challenging. Yeah, yeah. I can imagine it would be. But they wanted that. you to be good, because by the end, it has to be 
great. You got to get that lift. Yeah, you got to get that lift. <laughs> okay, any more questions? Okay, way in the back, and then I'll get you. Robin Williams aside, what do you think of uh, celebrities becoming voice actors? Well, I think it can work incredibly. It depends on the person and the role. So I think a lot of people that we know that are famous for something else really can bring a lot to an animated character and make it really rich and exciting. So I think that I don't have any problem with it. I think it's wonderful when you get an amazing actor doing an animated character, doing the voice. It brings a lot to it. And a lot of celebrities are celebrities for a reason, because they're really good. So, you know, if it's somebody who's a celebrity for something that's not acting, and that might be a different story, but yeah. And obviously Robin really broke that world open. He was the first major, major celebrity to do it. There, there had been kind of big name actors. Robbie Benson was quite a known name when he did Beauty and the Beast. Angela Lansbury obviously was already an established person, but Robin Williams was one of those superstars that I think people never expected to hear that person with an animated character. So that changed everything. Speaking of Angela Lansbury, you were on Murder, She Wrote. I was. I can't believe you knew that. <laughs> yes, I was. Somebody reached out to me when she passed away and said, you, you worked with Angela. Like You're, you're in this mm -hmm. Disney legacy together, but we also did a scene in Murder, She Wrote, and I don't know that the casting people really put it together that we were both in these big animated films. I, I was a waitress. I just went in for a three-line part of a waitress, and I actually messed up one of the lines in the audition. And I thought, <laughs> well, that didn't go well. Again, if it is meant for you, you can't mess it up. They called and said, you got the job. I was like, how? <laughs> I didn't mess it up when I was on set, though. I got those three lines right every time. That's amazing. All right. Um, yeah. That was nerves, though. That was one of those things that you asked about when I walked in and I was like, nervous. It made me forget what I was in there to do. But, but that character was funny. She had a funny line. And it's one thing that I can do well. And I think that that maybe got them to give me a chance. That's great. Mm -hmm. You had a question. Yes, yeah, so we were talking about Ocean City, Maryland. When my husband did Runaway Bride, there was a scene, or it was not a scene, it was a moment in the movie where they wanted a picture of his new girlfriend because they didn't want the Julia Roberts character to look like she had ruined everybody's life by <laughs> ditching them at the altar. So they wanted all the guys to have moved on and happily ever after. So for my husband's character, they're like, we need to have a picture of him with his current girlfriend in the scene so that, you know, it just gives everyone the indication that he's happy, he's not mad. And they said, would your real life girlfriend like to do the photo? And I was like, oh, yeah, sure, I'll do a photo. And they're like, okay, but you have to come to Baltimore to do it. And I was like, oh, okay, well, yeah, that's fine. So I came with him, and then it ended up being the photo and then a little scene at the end of the movie. I think there was a wedding scene where all the exes and their new girlfriends were attending the wedding. And then there was a little clip at the end where everyone was kind of celebrating couple by couple. Mm -hmm. So I was playing a tambourine, my husband played guitar, and we run down a hill. And it was like 10 degrees outside. It was oh the coldest gosh. day in Baltimore. And yeah, it wasn't really that fun, but I was really happy to be a part of it. Yeah, it's right here. Yes, you. Yeah. 
Yes, that's a really great question. So, you know, Dan Castellaneta, I'm sure everyone here knows who he is, Homer Simpson. He came and did the role of the genie for the 100 episode cartoon series because Robin was not available for that. Robin did come back and do the third sequel, but he wasn't available every Tuesday afternoon from two to six <laughs> to sit in that little room. Um, so Dan Castellaneta was the genie and, you know, he's brilliant. He was wonderful. He did a fantastic job and, you know, could do what you need as the genie. Improvisation, all these different characters, different voices. So I thought he did great. Robin was our original genie, so, you know, that was something that was always going to be close to my heart. But Dan was great. I was very lucky to get to work with him. Right here. It is, it's grueling. So that, the video game process is different in that way. I didn't answer that before. I meant to get to that. Thank you for bringing me back to it. Um, it, you usually have a lot more to record because video games, you can go off into so many different tangents. And for Kingdom Hearts, for example, we had pages, like a volume of recording to do. And sometimes with video games, you have to get some, technology has changed, but early days, the technology was such that you would have to articulate things in a certain way and really get that right. Also, a lot of video games, not Kingdom Hearts so much, but a lot of them have a lot of screaming, <laughs> right, and shouting. and. That is very taxing on your voice, and they usually save that for the end of the day so that you don't blow your voice out at the beginning of the day, but it can be really vocally exhausting and kind of mentally exhausting. They can be long days. So do you usually on that just get like lines? It's not like a story that you're telling. It, it's a story but the way you record it is just a line, a line, right. a line. That's right. It's line to line. Like they're marked. They have numbers, one, two, three, you know, to 1,000. <laughs> and, yeah. and you just jump from line to line, and the director is there to give you context. So if there's something you're like, well, what is this line? I don't really, I don't really know what I'm saying here. They'll tell you what part of the story you're in, what's happening around you. So, yes. Nobody, ha okay, right here. Yes, so I have lots of techniques, and, and people who are singers um, have even more than this. But I think to keep the chords hydrated, to, to try to balance when you overuse your voice, to not use it for a few days, let it recover, um, I drink throat coat tea, which is fantastic. I always have lozenges in my bag. I, I have them for me and for anyone around me who needs them. So <laughs> I, I'm really very good to my voice. And if I have a recording coming up like I do in the next couple of weeks, when I'm not here talking to people, I won't be talking. So I'll really be resting my voice for the next few days in preparation for recording. That's mm -hmm. a good excuse. I'm, 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 I'm going to have to be just quiet. I can't talk to anybody. I like that. Any other questions? Right here. Yes. Oh, yes. You know, I get this question from time to time. I really loved it. I went to see it at a special screening in New York with Jafar. Jonathan Freeman and I went to see it together. I loved Jasmine. I thought Jasmine was incredible. And, you know, I've always shared this role. Like I said before, I've always, you know, contributed, contributed a piece to this character. Seeing every iteration of Jasmine, every person who's brought their something special to this character in this story, it's really fun for me. I love seeing the live action show at California Adventure, the, the
play they did there. I love seeing the Broadway stage version. I know a lot of Jasmines. <laughs> I know a lot of Jasmines now, but I don't know Na Naomi Scott. I haven't met her. I've met her Aladdin, but I haven't met Naomi. We just haven't been in the same room together. But we will eventually, I'm sure. Oh, I'm sure. Mm. Yes. That's a really great question. I have not done that yet in my life. I, for the first time this year, I started teaching, and that's something that I had never taken on that role before. Um, somebody asked me to teach at their school, um, the Queen's Theater in New York, and it is an acting class for performers with disabilities. And for the first time, in my career, I've really felt like I had something to contribute and share in that world because now that people are recording in their home studios, recording auditions on their home devices, I really feel like the world of voiceovers has opened up. You don't have to necessarily live in New York. You don't have to hustle to an audition. You, you have more time. You have the ability to send your audition in from anywhere, to record anywhere. So I was really excited to have this opportunity to work with people that may in the past not have had the same access to the work that I've done. And now they do and I wanna share what I know with them. So. Mm -hmm. That's great. All right, this will have to be our last question. Asking about new projects. I mean, <laughs> definitely not allowed to reveal. I'm not allowed, but it's for Disney. <laughs> so um, I think that would have been a good guess anyway. Um, yes, but yeah, we can't talk about things until they are ready to talk about them. When they're ready to talk about it, they let us know. And then it's when we post. <laughs> <laughs> Well, everybody, let's give a huge, huge round of applause. Thank you. Thank you, you are, all look at so this. much. Oh, thank you. Hey, this is Alex Malari Jr. and you are watching Phantom Spotlight. Be sure to hit that like button, share, and subscribe. Your emperor commands it. Thanks for watching.